Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Um, so by way of introduction, and that was a long introduction, uh, bottom line, I've been in the trading space since uh, about 1997, um, and in that time period, I've, I've traded pretty much everything you could possibly imagine uh, on both sides of the extreme from the late 90s to the financial crisis to every little pop and drop in between those time periods. So uh, I've been privy to, you know, uh, I think what, what has been a very um, exciting and an opportunistic time period in, in, the, in you know, in our in our market's uh, evolutionary history in the sense that it, it, the story will continue long long after I am uh, I am here. So uh, I, I thought that, you know, since I was invited to, to speak and I appreciate the invitation, I would share some of the things that I've learned along the way. Uh, some of these things are, uh, no, I would say none of the things that I'm going to share are, 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 you know, are entirely groundbreaking in the sense that they are just more sometimes good to hear again. And I'm sure that uh, some of you are going to walk away saying, you know, that was that was it was good to hear. Uh, it was refreshing. Um, and you know, my every time I've done a, an educational webinar, um, whether it's on a specific trading setup or or, or uh, you know what I think the market's going to do, or you know some sort of more uh, akin to what goes on in between your ears, the psychological elements of trading and and, and the way you think uh, and the way we respond to markets and 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 you know price movement. Um, it's all been as a result of the experiences that I've had personally and professionally uh, as a trader. And I've you know I went from someone who was very very lucky in the sense that I was a you know a part of a time period early in my career that you know again we've all heard about and read about and even some of you I'm sure participated in where you could make money just by kind of turning it on your computer um, but when that ended you know uh, I was able to survive via you know good risk management good discipline um, and and uh, the ability to figure out what it was I didn't know most traders that I've ever worked with um, that, that that are trying to get better at trading, um, they don't know what they don't know. Um, it's it's you know what some people call the unconscious incompetence. You don't even know what you don't even know. So how you know how can you begin to figure it out? Um, and that was you know that was sort of me. Although I had been fortunate enough to to reap the benefits of a market in terms of you know you know gains and profit, I really was not really all that mature and well versed in in my approach to trading. And it took me you know, a couple of years to just to get my feet stable and, and build a good foundation from which I could relaunch myself. So I am more lucky than I am anything else, and I'm the first one to, to tell you that. Uh, had it not been for the good fortune of the late 90s, I don't know that, that, that I would have been able to sustain my trading career for as long as I have and build, you know, several businesses around it. Um, so let's get on, let's get, let's get into it. Uh, as I know time is, you know, limited, and I do have um, a, a good deal uh, to cover, so let's see here. Can you see my screen? Is it changing? I don't think it's changing. Give me one second here. One sec, sorry for the delay. Hmm. Let's see here, it's not working. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so <clears throat> here's the disclaimers, and I'll let you just take a minute to read that. All right. Uh, this is something that I've had up on my computer as a trader since, you know, for years and years and years, and I always share it. I just think it's a great quote. Um, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I failed over and over again in my life, and that is why 
I succeed, and that was a quote by Michael Jordan. And I think, you know, if you sit and you, you take some time and let that kind of resonate on you, you'll think about what he's saying. We all know Michael Jordan for all his accomplishments, but yet he talks about the things that he that didn't go right for him and how he was able to, you know, use those experiences to to continue to move forward. And, and my trading career, and many of I'm sure many of you can probably you know relate to that to some degree. And you know, because I know traders typically are creatures that, that learn by doing. Uh, I, I've yet to meet very few people in my life that they, they want to get into trading and so they go down a path of exploration uh, and, and learning before they actually you know, start trading. Most traders, uh, myself no different, they, they, we, just, we just go. We, we, we open an account, we put money in it, we start trading, we make, we lose, we make, we lose. Until such point, you, know, you, you say to yourself, I gotta, I gotta stop being a hamster in a wheel and I gotta start moving forward. Um, and, and, you know, I think that this, like I said, just for, just to get you to think, um, a little bit about me, uh, I've been, like I said, I'm from the, uh, Philly area, I still live, uh, not too far, I live in South Jersey, I went to the University of Miami, uh, I've been a professional risk analyst for, for 18 years, it's another fancy way of saying a trader, because really, the trading part is the easy part, the buying and the selling. It's analyzing the, the risk that, that is the challenging part and, and developing the trade ideas, which is really what I do. Uh, I'm a managing partner at T3 Companies, which is the parent company at T3 Live that also owns T3 Trading Group. The most important part of my life uh, are these three kids, and I, you know, like I said, you can't be a great coach without a, without a great team, and these are the, you know, the people that get me up every day, and uh, I think it, you know, it, it's important to have that in your life, whether it's kids or family or loved ones or friends. Whatever it is that, that gets you up in the day to, to, to continue down the journey of, uh, of being a trader, I think, is, is paramount. Um, there is a real element of, of human emotion that goes into this, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Let's talk about rule number one, and, and again, I, I use the word rule, but these are really more, um, uh, th these are really more what I consider just helpful, helpful tips, um, and, and you can take them for, for, for what it's worth. Uh, let's see here what just happened to my presentation. I don't know why it stopped. Can you guys hear me? Hello? All right, you can hear me, that's good. Sorry for the technical difficulties here. All right. So we call rule number one, be comfortable with the unknown. Uh, as a trader, <clears throat> you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen next week, next month, or next year. Um, you can't control the outcome of a situation. You can't control what a stock does or what a market does. These are not things that are, that are new and profound, but these are things that you need to sometimes be reminded of. Uh, I've met way too many traders that they get themselves into situations where they just, uh, they, they marry themselves to, to a situation. And when the outcome is not what they anticipate it to be, uh, they can't seem to get out of their own way. Um, as a trader, you have to be okay losing. You can't control or predict the outcome of any situation. You can make assumptions uh, about the probabilities of an outcome, uh, but at the end of the day, you can't control definitively if that's going to be the outcome. Uh, we live in a world based on, on risks and probabilities, and you have to be comfortable with that. If you're not comfortable with the unknown, and many people are not, there are many people that get into trading and they, they realize, you know, usually as a result of, of losing money, they, they just can't handle the fact that they're not in the driver's seat all the time. Um, and, and, and that's, that's one of the hardest mental obstacles to, to, to overcome is that you can do all the planning, you can do the research, you can read the, the, the reports, you can look at the charts, you can study, you can spend hours staring at a computer screen, and it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean that you're going to make money. Um, and that's, you know, you have to be comfortable with that. That is... Uh, one of the foundations from which traders all have common ground. We all live in the in the world of the unknown, um, and and if you can't if you can't be comfortable with a losing trade, it's going to be hard to move forward. 
Let me give you an example, and I'm going to pull some charts. Uh, these are trades that that you know are that I, you know, put on, um, and I run a, a a product called Off the Charts, um, and it's a it's a newsletter, and it, it basically gives you know trading ideas, mostly swing trading ideas. So here's a trade, and again, it's kind of like a before and after. It's it's a very simple thing to show, right? So you can see in the in the in this particular setup at this time, and this was a couple of months ago. Uh, this was a long trade in in GoPro through 4030, with the stop and the target set. Uh, and again, you can't control what happens, and, and the outcome was such that uh, the stock broke out and went to 47, which we sold, and then continued to run to to 70. Um, you can't control uh, ultimately what happens. You can make a plan, and you can set your plan, and you can let the trades develop as per the plan, but ultimately you can't control what, what comes, you know, what, what, what comes next. And this is an example of, you know, a trade that was a good trade. Again, we, we, we anticipated the situation uh, without knowing, again, definitively what would happen. Again, here was the anticipation stage. Here was the, uh, this was the result. Again, all going back to the controlling the unknown. Here's a different example in, in Loco, uh, uh, another long entry that we took where the stock broke through our entry price. You can see our target and our stop there in the chart. So uh, we're defining the trade scenario. And here was the outcome. The trade failed. And we took the loss. So as much as you can set a plan and chart a course for where you want to buy, what you want to buy, and why you want to buy it, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have the outcome that you want. And these, this is a part of the business. This is a part of being in the markets. It is a very, very important part of being in the markets. And if you're not prepared to handle it, if you're not prepared to say, why didn't this work, or it didn't work, how do I adjust and move on, then trading is always going to be a, a, a very, very difficult battle. Uh, again, another example uh, in a trade we took in EOG. Again, to the short side, uh, entry was through 99 and a quarter. Um, and, and again, we don't know the outcome. I'm anticipating what the outcome will be based on based on price and pattern and other other variables that I use. Uh, the target was 90 and a half. And again, here was the outcome. The trade went to 90 and a half, and it was a good outcome. But like I said, we live in a world of uh, uh, unknowns. Uh, here's another trade. This is a trade we actually just put on. This is a trade uh, short Chipotle CMG, and it's off of a weekly chart, which is what you see in front of you. Um, and uh, uh, this is something we currently are, are, are trading right now. With this is a live position in, in the off the charts portfolio. And uh, again, we can set our stops. I have my price. I have my pattern. I have my rationale for why I'm on the short side of this trade. Um, but I can't control the outcome, right? I just have to sit and wait and let the market do its thing so that I can ultimately get the, 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 the result I desire. Um, and again, I, shift, I will shift my uh, targets and my stops and, and all those kinds of things as trades develop over time as things start to either you know, move lower in this case or, or move higher in, in, a, in a scenario of being long. But my point is, is that you can't control the unknown. What you can control is what you see, where you identify entry points, stop points, and target prices so that you can ultimately, again, live in a world where you are basing your, uh, your situations on high probabilities. Again, that's the focus here, is that we live in a world of probabilities and not exacts, and you have to be okay with, with, with the ability to say, uh, or, you know, I can't control what happens tomorrow. I can't control whether this trade is, is definitively going to work. Based on the setup and, the, and the, the, the strategy, you can overlay some sort of probability numbers to it. Uh, but outside of that, you, you, you don't have definitive control. And that's the point of what I wanted to get accomplished, you know, to, to, to just kind of go over there with those charts is that, you know, you can, you can find trades that look great. Uh, you know, you hear that, that phrase a lot, I love this trade, or this trade looks great, <clears throat> but you can't control ultimately what, what happens. Um, and and I, I've found that in my experience in working with traders, uh, you know, we fall in love with things. We tend to fall in love with trades. 
Uh, we come up with an idea, however that idea is generated, whether it's technically uh, or whether it's, you know, based on some sort of news story or, you know, whatever your rationale for being a buyer or a seller may be, and, and then, you know, it's almost we want to be right. The, the desire to be right is, is more important than the trade itself. Um, and if you found yourself ever in that scenario where you just, you know, you just want to be right, chances are your trading career is not going to last very, very long. Being right is not a, is, is, is not a business that we, is not a part of trading. Uh, while it does help to be right um, and to be right more than we are wrong, ultimately what, what really matters is your ability to analyze risk. Uh, so let's talk about rule number two. <clears throat> uh, you risk more when, you're in, when, you're, when your win rate is high. And it's a pretty simply stated fact. When you are, um, when you are trading well and, and you're winning more than you're losing, or your trades are profitable more than, uh, uh, than they are losers, then <clears throat> you want to risk more on your trades. And we'll, we'll kind of go into that. <clears throat> you don't arbitrarily risk a random amount of, of um, a random amount, uh, let's say 2% on, on any given trade, um, or 1% or 3% or whatever the numbers are. And I, I know a lot of people tend to do this. They say, oh, I risk 2% uh, you know, on a trade, uh, or 5%. Or what, what, again, you can put your own numbers in there. Um, understand the connection between your win rate, your position size, and how that impacts your account. Um, it wouldn't make more sense to, to risk more when your win rate is very high than when you have a 50-50 win-loss rate. A lower winning rate means that you'll have more losing trades, and therefore the greater the risk, the greater your risk per trade, the bigger your swings will be in your account balance. So it's very, very important that, it, that if you are trading, I think what, what I'm not mentioning here, and I'm going to talk about it for a second, is that you treat it as a business. And I know that you've probably heard that before. Um, treating it as a business meaning that you keep track of your, what your business is doing. Uh, no different than any other business uh, uh, out there. Whether you're you know, selling sneakers or trading stocks, if you're not keeping a well-detailed journal of what you're doing in terms of the trades you're taking um, and, and tracking your winners versus losers so that you have the data in front of you to, to be able to say to yourself, okay, my win rate is this, therefore I should be doing, you know, adjusting my my risk based on my win rate. So if you have a high win rate, you know, I'd say north of 60%, then, uh, and we'll get into it in a, in a couple of slides, you can adjust how you, how much risk you are, you are putting on. <clears throat> rule number two, excuse me, rule number two kind of goes into rule number three, and rule number three is that losing streaks happen. They're not your fault. Uh, we've all been a part of uh, losing streaks. I've been uh, on a, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, because I'm transparent with what I do, you know, I've been on a losing streak um, over the last couple of weeks. And they're not your fault. Losing streaks are a part of being in the business. Uh, over the course of my 18-year career, I've probably had, you know, five or six um, that I can recall substantial losing streaks. And I remember in each losing streak, that I've had, you feel dejected, you feel uh, like maybe something has changed with the market, this isn't for you anymore, you know, it's time to move on, you know, you, you, it's the second guest syndrome. Um, and it, it's a really frustrating experience because, you know, we're all people and we all have some level of emotions. Um, some of us, you know, are able to control them or, 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 you know, compartmentalize them a little bit better than others. But, but you know, ultimately, if you're going to be a, a trader and you're going to be an active trader, someone who's engaged in the markets, you know, day in, day out, week in, week out, or what have you, whether you're, you know, very, very short-term day trader or you're, you know, you know, a couple of trades a week or a couple of trades a month, you know, I still consider that relatively active. You're going to have time periods where you're just, it just it, it's just not working out, um, and it's it's inevitable. No different than you know a basketball player who can't hit a jump shot or a baseball player who just can't hit the side of a barn. It's it's really no different. Um, as much as this is a, a a business of up and down in terms of you know price movement, it, it really 
eighty percent of what we do, believe it or not, goes on in, like I said earlier, in between your ears. It's how you think. It's your perception. It's the way you you know control your emotions. It, it, those are the those little things can make the the difference between you know um, good and, and and sometimes great. Uh, so losing streaks will happen, and, and they're not your fault. It's like that scene in Goodwill Hunting where he says it's it's not your fault. Well. It's, not your fault. Um, and sometimes you just need to remind yourself of that, especially when you're in, you know, a, a bad zone mentally, when you just feel like no matter what you do, you're going to be on the wrong side of the trade. And, you know, for, for all of you that are sitting and listening, uh, you know, ask yourself the question, you know, when was the last time I felt like that? Or, you know, have I ever felt like that? If you haven't, you probably haven't been trading that long. Um, but if you have been trading for, you know, north of, let's say, a year and a half or two years or some substantial amount of time, then chances are I, I am, I'm hopefully relating to you on some level. Um, just because I'm the guy with the, the microphone, you know, in the presentation doesn't mean I don't know what it's like to actually, you know, to, to have those, those feelings because anybody that tells you they haven't had a losing streak as a trader or, uh, or hasn't felt that way is either, you know, full of BS or has never traded a day in their life. <clears throat> winning rate, you know, I talk about win rate, it's a long-term concept. It's not about what you did today. <clears throat> and I hear a lot of day traders will say, oh, I made, you know, I made eight trades today and uh, I got four right, um, or I got six right, so my win rate is, you know, is 60%. That's not a win rate. Uh, you know, a win rate has to be calculated over a longer term period. So it's a sample size that has, you know, real data uh, uh, in it. Um, I would say anything north of, you know, a year uh, to start. And, and that first year is always the toughest year, but, you know, I, I calculate my win rate, you know, now based on a career of, of you know, 17, 18 years. Um, and obviously the more trades you have, the, the you know, the harder it is to, to change the percentages. But um, my win rate has typically been, you know, north of 55%, which is, which is good, uh, you know, relatively good. Um, but anyway, losing streaks, you know, are are, uh, are not your mistake. Um, you know, and you can't lose your your mind when they happen. You know, you, you do the same thing you did, you know, a month ago when it was working. You know, you don't deviate from what it was that made you money or has made you money over the long period of time. I see way too many traders do this. Is that they ultimately, you know, and it takes a certain there's a certain developmental stage that goes in there where you, you know, you, you go through, you have to figure out what that, you know, what your, what your approach to trading is, whether you're a day trader or a swing trader or, and then, you know, defining, okay, well, if I am a swing trader, you know, what kind of trades do I look for? Do I, you know, am I looking for reversal trades or mean reversion trades? Am I looking for trend trades? You know, uh, uh, you know, those kinds of things. Once you're able to sort of build your arena um, of what you do and how you do it, then you have to um, understand that you know if if it's working for you or, or if you've had success doing it, you know you don't want to deviate from it. Now that's not to say you can't make slight modifications to what you do or or the way you trade, but you don't want to necessarily just shift gears. And and one day you're you're you know you're swing trading, and then and you know the next day you're 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 a day trader, you know looking at five minute charts. So I my point is is that you know stay consistent with what you do in your approach and even when it doesn't work even when you go through those dark periods where you know you, you know you, you have a losing streak you can't just deviate and and change because um, you know the market you know the market's just not working for you. you you trade yourself out of it no different than you know a baseball player you know will just continue to swing the bat until he finds his rhythm again um, and, and like I said, over the long haul and over the, you know, over the years and years and years, um, if, if your approach to trading is good and your mindset is good and, and you really understand your craft um, of, of where to buy and what to buy and why and, and, and you, you, know, you can insert all the, uh, all the reasons for doing what you do with some level of, like I said, a higher win rate, then you know, you're going to see your way through for a long period of time. I've always said in, in all my presentations that if you show me a trader that has longevity, chances are you're looking at a successful trader. Most people think of traders by 
you know, some sort of money they make. Oh, he made a million dollars or he made $10 million. And the media loves to run with that. The CNBC of the world loves to, you know, do expose on, on, the, on the, you know, the, the person that made $40 million trading this, that, and the other. But that really, you know, that's not what it's about. It, it's, it's really about longevity because ch most, as we all know, trading is a very, very difficult business. Statistically, it's not a high success rate. So when you get to the five-year mark, you, you got to say to yourself, well, okay, well, how am I going to get to 10 years? When you get to 10 years, how am I going to get to 20 years? Because chances are, if, you, if you've been doing this north of 10 years, you know, you should be, you know, you should be successful. You should be making money. Um, that, that's my philosophy on it. You know, I'm, I'm more about longevity than I am how much money you made this year. I know a lot of traders in my, you know, over the, my 18 years where they've had blowout years. They've made, you know, seven figure years and aren't even in business anymore. So that's not really a, a barometer for me for success. It, I really gauge it more by longevity, um, which is why I say win rate is a long term concept. <clears throat> so I'm going to show you a little data. And again, this is just hypothetical. Um, for sake of, of what I'm trying to explain here, but um, what you see below you is uh, a trader uh, with a 60% win rate, um, and as you can see, even you know six trades in a row, uh, six losers in a row, I should say, will occur every 245 days. Again, this is just you know based on pure math, um, and if you take two trades per day, you'll have a losing streak of six trades two times a year. So, you know, again, you can kind of play with the numbers as to how they may, you know, fit for, for you relative to your own, you know, activity level. Um, but my point in showing you this is that it's inevitable. Mathematically, it, it, it's bound to happen that you're going to have, you know, series of, of trades where you just lose, 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 lose. Um, you know, five in a row, six in a row, seven in a row, and obviously the more active you are, and the lower your win rate, you know, the more uh, the more frequency that you're going to see those those series of losing trades. Um, so again, sometimes we we all know this, but sometimes it, it it's very helpful to kind of talk about it and put it up in front of your face so that you can, you know, sit in the comforts of your home and think about how it how this applies to to you. Um, because I know a lot of times, and I if I ever bring this up, you know, someone will say that's a really good point. You know, I, I, I need to think about this more, and I need to chart it. I need to see where my, you know, where my streaks are and how frequently those streaks are occurring. You know, these numbers are all just, you know, sort of numbers in a grid. But if you actually take the time to do the statistics for your own business, you know, then you can chart your course and understand, you know, because for me, I, when I started to do this, what I realized was that, you know, I was much more objective-minded about my trading. I was, it, it kind of removed some of the emotion, and it made it more just a, a, another trade in a series of, 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 you know, trade after trade after trade after trade. I, I say to people all the time, you know, trading is like getting in a taxi. You know, taxi, a taxi cab has a purpose. It, it, the purpose is to get you from point A to point B, and hopefully in the fastest way possible. Um, I don't really care, you know, when I get into a trade, you know, uh, I don't, I don't care. What I mean by it is that I don't necessarily care how nice the taxi is, right? The taxi is something that serves a function, just like a trade. But when I buy a stock, you know, I want it to go up, and I want to get in, and I want, I want to get out. Um, and that's, you know, that's the way I, I approach it, so that, you know, I can't reflect back and say, oh, you know, that one trade really got me, or, or, or you know, uh, you know, I, I stuck with that one trade too long. You know, and it all boils down to having a solid plan and understanding why you're, you know, you're making those trades. But I think it really helps to, to do as much sort of statistical analysis on your own trading as possible because it does help, you know, remove the emotional tie to, to your trading so that you can look at it very, you know, objectively, uh, black and white, and say, okay, you know, every every for every 240 trades I make, uh, you know, I have usually I have eight losers in a row or six losers in a row, whatever the however the numbers may you know, may, may sort themselves out. Uh, rule number four, <clears throat> uh, rule number four is your position sizing. Again, um, things you need to be cognizant of. All, you know, we talk about, you know, profitable traders, 
Um, and we talk about, you know, I know you've probably all read books about, you know, this trader or that trader or somebody that's, you know, iconic in the world of trading. But I, I think that the picture that you need to really think about is, you know, how are you going to, um, uh, how are you going to put yourself in a position to be, you know, iconic for, for yourself, to be the master of your own destiny for, you know, not to sound all Tony Robbins on you, but um, it, it's one, it does all come full circle, the way you think, your attention to detail, the way you, uh, the way you objectively look at the, your, you know, your trading, um, and, and position size does uh, come into play, and we're going to kind of talk about it for <clears throat> just a couple of minutes. Um, so, you know, based on uh, rule number three, it's important to look at, at and analyze the, your, your sizing per trade. Uh, most traders that I know, again, I'm kind of generalizing, have, you know, very indifferent or sloppy attitudes about their, the size of their positions that they buy or sell stocks because they don't know the importance or the impact that it has on your overall performance. Um, based on the last uh, data that I showed you with the losing streaks, you know, them being inevitable and not being able to adjust your risk size uh, and position size can be very, very costly because some people just don't think about it. So again, we're going to talk about hypotheticals here. So uh, let's say you have a, a, an account with $10,000 and a 4% position size. So you're risking about $400 uh, per trade. Uh, the, you know, the trader, uh, uh, if you lose, if you were to lose, uh, you know, six trades in a row but, but, but stay with the same position size, you know, you can see uh, that you'd actually be losing a lot more money uh, than you would um, uh, otherwise. So it's important that you adjust your position size. And I know that sometimes it's, it's you know, we, we don't think like this. Again, all I've done here in some of these, in, in, with some of this is to, is to apply some basic math uh, to, to the business of trading. Uh, and, I, and I know that sometimes it's, it's easy, especially if you're sitting watching the market, you know, day in, day out, to get consumed by the impulse to want to buy and to want to not think about your position size, you buy as much as you can because you love the trade, or you short as much as you can because you love the trade. But ultimately, <clears throat> that mentality and mindset just means that you're ultimately setting yourself up for, you know, probably some sort of exit strategy uh, from the business of trading. Um, and you can see here again, just simple math would show you that, uh, you know, as you don't, if you were to not adjust your position size. Uh, relative to your account balance, then you ultimately are risking substantially more uh, on every trade. So um, just something to think about. And again, the, the takeaway here is that if you're not doing it, uh, you know, spend some time, you know, tonight or whenever you have some free time, you know, to reflect on your own trading and, and how you approach, you know, the sizing of your trades uh, on any given day, week, month. And if there is some sort of mathematical or systematic approach, it doesn't have to be this. I'm just giving this as, as again, just generalized, you know, information for you to then consume and 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 digest and and turn into your own. Uh, but I see it all the time uh, in working with you know traders that they just they, they they their position sizing is either based on you know a moment, uh, that moment being how they feel on any given day. They feel uh, they feel great. They're they're enthusiastic, you know, uh, and they just throw caution to the wind with their position sizing. Very, very important that you pay attention to your position size. <clears throat> um, so on that point, I want to show you what it looks like um, of a trader that, you know, uh, that used the same position size, you know, that, that, that actually has a process. Um, if you're constantly adjusting your position sizes, your, your losses are smaller, uh, and the risk per trade is much more consistent. Um, so let's take a look here. So by adjusting your position size, you lose less when you do have the losing streaks, and you'll recover faster when that streak does end. So and the second point is the psychological pressure is smaller since you're limiting your losses, uh, and you don't increase your risk while being a losing streak, which by itself is, is already difficult, as, as we know, for anybody that's ever had a losing streak. Um, and it's OK to talk about losers. I know that you know, I'd much rather sit here and tell you about a bad trade than a trade that worked out and, and went well. Uh, because there's a lot more to gain from the things that don't work. Like Michael Jordan said, you know, when he reflects, he thinks about he thinks about the things that didn't work well for him, and that's why he succeeds. 
so here's an example of a, a trader that has uh, adjusted position sizing based on uh, you know the, the the size of their account. And again, take the information and, and put your own numbers in. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not suggesting these are the these are the numbers, but for sake of like I said, just conversation, this is a good healthy way to look at the to look at trading and, and to reflect and, and how you can make it you know apply to it to your own uh, to your own uh, your own performance. Um, so by adjusting your position size, ultimately you're keeping your risk you know your risk in check, and you're also you know mitigating damage when you have one of those. Uh, losing streaks if you do lose five in a row, six in a row, you know, um, and, and I think that that's a really, really helpful, simple, again, simple being uh, key here that, that will help, you know, in times of, of downdrafts, uh, which are, you know, ultimately are the times that matter the, the most. Um, the, the, the periods of time in your trading where you go through a losing streak or a slump or whatever you want to call it um, are the times that are going to matter the most because, you know, sometimes slumps you can get out of relatively quickly. Sometimes, you know, they, they tend to, to, to linger for longer periods of time. Um, and, and when they do, you know, you can do great financial damage and psychological damage, to be honest, to, to yourself if you're not, you know, cognizant of it. And there are steps you can take to, to mitigate uh, the risk while going through those, uh, those slumps so that when the slump finally does change, um, and you start to get more in tune with the market, or your trades start to work, you know, more consistently. Then you know it'll be a lot easier to to move forward rather than digging a giant hole, only to then have to spend the next you know x amount of weeks or months, you know, climbing out of that hole. And I know that this is all very you know simple type of stuff, and and, uh, and I know many of you are saying, well, you know, but but it's amazing um, that that sometimes the the most simple you know the simple concepts are the ones that we tend to to not focus on. Um, I had a a conversation with somebody actually last night, uh, and uh, yeah, I was it was I played tennis and I, I had a tennis match last night, and and uh, one of the guy we were talking, one of the guys I play with, and he says to me, um, we we're talking about unforced errors uh, for those of you that play tennis, and it's amazing. He said that that. <clears throat> Seventy-five percent of the people that are that that win Grand Slams, you know, major tournaments, and we're talking about on a you know a, the most supreme professional level, uh, the winners are always those that that have the fewest unforced errors. So it's really more of of being you know championships are won by playing good defense, and good defense, you know, is ultimately what I'm talking about here is being able to you know adjust what you do and 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 when things aren't going well, so that you're you know, keeping yourself uh, in the game, so to speak. Um, a good defense, you know, wins championships. And I, and I really, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, tennis or, or football or, or whatever. It's very, very much applicable uh, in trading. And, and, you know, to those that think about their trading in this way, where they're, like I said, keeping, you know, keeping tabs on their data, uh, and then they're adjusting their trading, are the ones that are treating it like a business, and they're the ones ultimately that are going to, you know, you know, move forward, uh, and then uh, uh, continually uh, move forward year after year until that, you know, they're the ones that I talk about the quote unquote, you know, those that have longevity, um, and I, and I really think that <clears throat> markets are always going to be dynamic. You're not going to be able to control the outcome of the market. There's going to be bull markets. There's going to be bear markets. There's going to be pops. There's going to be drops. I mean, you know. But what what remains consistent is again your approach and the way you treat uh, the way you treat your you know your business. Um, so moving on here again, fact adjusting your position side helps avoid psychological problems and also makes recovering from losing streaks a heck of a lot easier. Uh, take it from uh, my experience that you know just to keep trading is one thing. Like I said, trade yourself out of the slump. Stay focused on what you do. Don't second guess yourself. But at the same time, you know, manage your risk appropriately and effectively by, by you know, adjusting your position size. Emotions in check. Uh, kind of the last, you know, tip, <coughs> excuse me, tip or, or rule um, if, if, you know, if you want to think about it that way. Um, and, and this is always, the, you know, I think the most fun. Um, and, and this is something that I've had in my notes for a long time, and it's, you know, a little nice little you know, chart here, and it says, 
what traders say, what traders do, and the emotions and the tips. Um, and, I, and you can read it for yourself, but you know, I know that, that anybody, that, like I said, that's been in this business for a long time has, has, has gone through this, uh, you know, these experiences, maybe not all of them, but some of them. Um, the, the, I think the most common, uh, the most common is probably um, the first one, which is, you know, just fear, uh, afraid to pull the trigger, uh, second guessing yourself. Um, and, and then the last one, the hindsight ones are, are my favorite, always looking in the rear view mirror. I should have held it longer, or I should have got out of it earlier. Um, shoulda, coulda, woulda doesn't really, you know, doesn't really work in this business. Uh, and, and I think that these are, again, not to say that this applies to everybody, but you should be cognizant, just like you are of your, of your risk, of, of, of your emotions. Um, and you should know that, you know, when you start finding yourself saying some of these things or feeling some of these things, you know, be on top of it. Um, I read a book once, I can't recall the name of the book, uh, years and years and years ago. And it talked about, you know, not having emotion in your trading. Um, the best traders are the ones without the emotion. People without emotion are dead. I mean, that's just, that's just a scientific fact. If you have no emotion, you're not a living person. I just didn't understand, and to this day, I still don't understand the concept. We all laugh, we all cry, we all, you know, have things that, that make us happy, sad, whatever it may be. If those, you know, if, if, we, if, if we didn't, we, like I said, I don't think we'd be here. Um, now, it's not to say you can't have emotion to be good at trading. It's, it's, it's your ability to be a cognizant, like I said, of your emotions and how they're impacting you know, your decision-making process. You, you know, traders that perform well um, or excel typically are very much in check with how they feel, um, and, and they're very honest with themselves. Uh, typically, traders that don't perform well, don't achieve maximum performance results, are the ones that are, you know, I don't want to say lie to themselves, but they don't want to believe how they feel. They, 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 they know they feel a certain way, but they choose not to accept it. Um, and, I'm, and I'm sure I'm probably hitting home again on points that some of you may, you know, may agree with, um, because I, I know that I was, you know, at some point I think I was like that. I knew that I was, you know, always talking about shoulda, coulda, woulda, but I, you know, rather than, you know, I, I kind of made excuses for myself. Um, and I think that being, you know, being honest with yourself is, is, you know, a very, very healthy part of, of, of success in this business. If you are feeling, you know, greedy, if you are feeling, you know, scared, if you are not pulling the trigger when you know it's the right thing to do because you're in a losing streak, you know, you, you need to, you know, you need to kind of be on top of that. And, and I wish there was, you know, a, a, me a mechanism that I could teach you or, or, or give to you outside of maybe journaling every day or writing down, you know, the things about, you know, your trading day or, or, or you know, your performance or your thought process, there's not much I can say other than, you know, it kind of always helps to reinforce by reading some of these things because I know that many of you will probably repeat them um, throughout the course of, of, of a trading day or, or a week or a month or, or you know, how, however, however you're, you know, in, however often you're engaged in the market. Um, so let's move on here. Uh, so for trading to make money, and I suspect that's the only reason to trade, um, I know that trading can be a lot of fun, but I think we're all in it to make money. You have to treat it like a job. You know, it's repetitive, it is dull, it can be very boring. There are times where it can be, you know, very exciting, but I think by and large it is very dull. You know, I, I used to tell people that 80% that, um, of the time I spend trading is, is not trading. Uh, which means that I, you know, the vast majority of any trading day, you know, maybe I'll make a trade here or a trade there, um, but I don't spend my whole day, you know, buying and selling stocks, and it's it's fairly, you know, it can be sometimes dull and boring. Um, you know, we don't celebrate our winners, we don't cry over our losers. Um, you know, if, if you if you find yourself falling into that category, you know, like I said, you're not really in touch with what's happening, you know, in between your ears. Uh, we live in a world of probabilities. Um, uh, we live in a world of, of, of risk versus reward uh, and win rates. Um, your job is to make sure you execute your trades 100% according to your plan and don't get emotionally attached. Now, what I'm leaving out here is obviously the ability to create the plan. 
Um, and that's, you know, I think that's where I, where I come into play or, or potentially come into play is that, you know, I help traders not only, you know, understand the psychological, you know, barriers to, to success um, and help them, you know, kind of create game, you know, uh, uh, business structures that work for them uh, in terms of simplicity, but, but also in terms of, you know, being able to come up with a game plan. You know, it's, it's easy to say, uh, but, but what do you do? You know, the question always comes up to me, well, how do you find your trades? And that was probably one of my hardest, the hardest things that I, that I had to do, you know, it, after the dot-com boom when I really kind of reinvented myself because I had to, was finding the right trades so that I knew, you know, what the risk was. And I, you know, in, in a, earlier in the presentation, I showed you uh, a slide on, on uh, I believe it was CMG, uh, Chipotle, and I said, this is a live trade, and I can show you others. Uh, as well, if time permits, but being able to 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 come up with the idea idea generation was and still is one of the most challenging things for all traders they they you know many of you can probably repeat verbatim what it was I just you know kind of went over, but when it comes to actually finding the right trades, you know long this or short this it it's always a very challenging uh, uh, challenging thing to do and and I think that it's become uh, for me, kind of a second nature at this point where I can, you know, I typically, again, I, I live very much in a world of, of daily and weekly charts. I'm not really much on the intraday side, but finding ideas that, that ultimately really are just built around risk, finding low risk areas of entry um, so that I can, you know, step into a trade with, with limited risk. And again, it's not about being right. It's not about being right. It's about you know understanding the risk attached to it, and that that's the most important part of, of what I do. And if you if you're not able to do that, if you're not able to lay the foundation, and you're not able to you know put a plan together of, of you know what trades you should be looking at and why, um, then you know everything else is going to be uh, uh, exceptionally more complicated. Um, the, the idea is that you know you're going to get to a high win rate because you're able to put together uh, a plan where um, you are, uh, you know, going after going after the low hanging uh, fruit. Um, so, uh, fact: if you're looking for excitement and entertainment, trading is not the place to be. Traders are typically rational; they're very much in touch with their, their emotions, and they do the same thing over and over again. So, as I mentioned, I run a uh, a service called Off the Charts Premium, and it's basically a nightly newsletter. It comes out at 7 p.m. each night. Uh, of which I put out, you know, trading ideas, and they're typically swing trading ideas. Some of them will be based off of daily charts. Some of them will be based off of of, of, of weekly charts, um, and they are all built around risk. Uh, all those trades that I showed you in the earlier slides are are, you know, from the off the charts product, and and typically it's a long short portfolio. Uh, uh, relative to whatever the market's doing, you'll see a handful of long ideas or a handful of short ideas. Uh, on some weeks, I'll give out you know five or six trading ideas. In other weeks, I'll give out one or sometimes even none. Uh, again, relative to what I see and, and what I think is happening. Uh, it also comes with. Again, here's a, an example of what you see at night. It's a table of ideas. Again, this this uh, this image happens to have a whole lot of trading ideas. Right now, I think there's probably seven or eight trading ideas. Uh, overall that I have out there. Uh, we're long some of the energy names, uh, um, C&J Energy, C&J Energy, uh, we're long uh, Patterson Energy, uh, looking for some of these stocks to kind of pop to the upside. We're short a couple of the high beta names. Uh, I put on Netflix today on the short side um, and, and Chipotle. Um, and and so you know it it does really vary. It's not a it's, it's the kind of product where it's not um, uh, it, it'll change uh, in the sense that you're not you know we'll trade stocks that are six dollars. We'll trade stocks that are six hundred dollars. We'll be long. We'll be short. Uh, I'm very much a believer in in you know trading both sides of the market if and when the trade makes you know makes sense. We'll look for trend trades. Stocks that are pulling back in an uptrend. We'll look for uh, stocks that are reversing at, at areas of significance, uh, but again, I do most of, if not all, the work for you, all the work for you uh, over overnight, based on you know again just my own years of experience. Um, 
So let's uh, let me just get through this. So every night I do a video. It's about 20 minutes or so, uh, and I cover all the ideas in the portfolio. I talk about the market, what I see happening, where I see the markets going, so on and so forth. So you get sort of my daily download. Um, I send out real-time text alerts, uh, SMS text alerts every day. Not every day, but a couple times a week if and when I see something that's actionable, whether it's you know buy this stock or sell this stock or, or adjust your stops or whatever it may be, so that you're you know you're sort of not you're not at it alone. Um, and uh, we're offering a special. It's usually ninety nine dollars a month, but it's uh, seventy five dollars per month for, for for today's presentation. And you can go to t 3 livecom forward slash OTC. It's t 3 livecom forward slash OTC, and you will get your daily dose of me every day, whether you like it. Uh, or not. Um, somebody asked me to put back rule number five. Let's see. Let me go backwards here. I think this is what you wanted to see. Um, uh, and and that's you know that's that's pretty much what I do. Um, I, at this point, I think I can probably open it up to. Uh, questions on the floor if there if there are any questions um, or I can you know kind of talk about some of the trades that we have on currently uh, I know that I covered a lot of ground here and I don't expect you know uh, I don't leave my, many room for questions but again if there are some about uh, about me my own trading style you know how I got to where I am anything it's sort of an open open forum for you let's see here Um, questions. Questions in the room. Uh, do you use a trailing stop? of any kind based on chart underlying price target? Yes. So I trail all my stops. If a trade is working, um, uh, I, will, I will always bring stop. You know, if I'm long, I will bring stops up uh, relative to, uh, again, it, it depends on the, the nature of the trade. Um, but I will always trail my stops, um, especially on, on trades that are, uh, that are working. I'll, if stock breaks out, for instance, if it's a breakout trade, um, I'll bring my stops to break even. Um, if it's stock that it's trending higher, I'll continue to tr you know bring my stocks up, stops up to prior pivots. Um, and if it's if it's a trade that just doesn't look like it's going to work out, I'll bring my stops down to just to mitigate risk. Um, uh, I actually did that today. Uh, we were we were short. Uh, I had a short in Baidu. Uh, and I brought my stops down um, uh, a little bit. So, uh, you know, I, I'm always moving my stops around, you know, because like I said, risk is the most important thing that I, that I focus on. It's the only thing that matters. Um, and it, 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 you know, so yes, to answer your question is I do all the time. Um, what entry setups do you look for the most? Uh, I don't know that I have a, a go-to setup um, it, I think it's really rel I think it's relative to market conditions. What I do is I spend a lot of time a lot of time doing time frame alignment and analysis. So I'm always looking at weekly charts. You know, most of the time I spend my time looking at weekly charts, and then when I find a good weekly chart, um, you know, I'll then put you know I'll start to drill down and I'll go to smaller time frames like a daily and sometimes an hourly, relative to the speed of the stock, to find you know setups that I think are are actionable. Uh, actionable can be, you know, shorting a stock uh, for mean reversion or, or, or buying a stock for mean reversion uh, relative to the 21 EMA. Um, so I have various, you know, setups. Some of them are trend trading. Some of them are with the trend. Some of them are against the trend. Some of them are based on chart patterns. Some of them are based on, you know, uh, uh, candlestick patterns over a, uh, over a shorter time window. So it, you know, I got a lot of kind of, you know, setups that I can. That I can pull from, um, uh, so I don't know that there's one particular. I don't really have a favorite per se. You know, reversal trades. You know, buying a stock that's you know uh, uh, been battered and bruised, 
or shorting a stock that's you know going straight to the moon um, tend to be uh, you know tend to be I guess more of my favorite only because they tend to be faster money uh, it's just a you know it's just a, a typically a faster trade but you know outside of that I don't know that I have a, a, a favorite per se um, let's see here Uh, trailing is a percentage of entry price. Uh, what's your rule for a chase versus a forecast? So every night I give it, a, you know, every trade has an entry price, and that entry price is is really more of an area. So, um, you know, I give an exact price, but I always tell my subscribers or my readers, you know, these are these are areas, and you know, if a trade triggers by a penny but then turns the other way, you know, be cognizant of it. So it's not an exact science, but um, you know, typically uh, stocks. You know, I like to see them trade through the suggested buy. You know, buy points with you know with some sort of uh, uh, volume um, and and you know some sort of character that, that that says something. You know, this trade is, is something that that is something has changed. Um, so uh, you know, I, I don't know that there's a, a a hard and fast rule. I will tell you that if if for instance we have a buy order. In a stop that that is you know the entry price is 50 and then it gaps up to 52 overnight, then you know there's no trade. So we don't chase stocks uh, ever. Uh, I typically will always let trades come to me, um, whether it's a long or a short. Uh, right now we're looking at uh, Tesla on the short side. Uh, the suggested entry price was was uh, uh, on a bounce to 206. It hasn't quite happened yet, so we just sit and, and we and we. And we wait. I will put stocks out. I will put out ideas before they happen. I don't put out trade ideas after they've already broken out. And I and I say to people, look, there are trades that just will leave the station without us. Uh, you never want to chase a stock because by chasing a stock up or down, all you're doing is inherently increasing your exposure in terms of risk. So there will be trades that you just miss, and that's an, that's the part. That's that's just a part of doing business. It's a cost of doing business. There's going to be a trade that just gets away from you. Uh, because it just it happens overnight, or uh, it happens unexpectedly, and, and, and you know unless you have the appropriate entry technique, you know I never recommend uh, chasing a stock up or down. Um, what's your favorite time frame from which you to base your entry and exit? Well, I think the weekly is the most. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a question of my favorite time frame. I think it's the most significant. Um, I think the weekly chart is the most significant time frame that any technical trader could use. Uh, I, you know, I am a technical trader. Uh, stu I study the movement of price, um, and the reason that I gravitate towards weeklies is because it kind of weeds out a lot of the noise. Uh, I can see, you know, trends with clarity. I can see, you know, significant turning points uh, with clarity. Whereas sometimes with daily charts or hourly charts, you know, there's a lot more detail and nuances in it. So you kind of miss the, the the you know the focus of what's happening, and it's easy to get lost in those you know those nuances, those day to day turning points. Um, and I've seen so many traders get just chewed up because you know the, the time frame they look at is so small that they're getting stopped out of trades because you know they're 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 just looking at way too much you know way too much way too many data points, um, or they're, they're, they just have no real you know focus on what's happening overall. You know, my, my mind works in a way that I need clarity. I need simplicity. I just need to see up, down, or sideways. Uh, and that, you know, weekly charts tend to give me that clarity. Now, you know, stocks that typically trade from weekly charts, you know, will, will happen over longer periods of time. Every, you know, candlestick is effectively one week. So my trades tend to, you know, can sometimes drag on for a month or two months or what have you. There are times where I will work off of smaller time frames if I'm trading you know, a, a momentum-driven name like an Apple or, you know, a Chipotle or a Priceline or something that's a high flyer, you know, I will work off of smaller time frames. Um, in, in the next couple of weeks, uh, believe it or not, we're going to add an option supplement to the product. Uh, so not only at 7 o'clock are you going to get my trading ideas, but at 10 o'clock that night you're going to get another uh, a completely separate uh, newsletter that will basically overlay an options trading strategy on top of the stock trading strategy for those that you know are more comfortable in the options space. So we're basically just taking my trading ideas and leveraging them so that option traders can get the the, the benefit. I myself, uh, as I've I've got years of experience trading options, but by no means do I consider myself uh, an expert relative to uh, 
uh, the person that's helping me put the op option supplement together. Uh, and that'll be rolled out probably in the next, you know, I'd say three to six weeks. Uh, we're putting the finishing touches on that as it's been something that's been demanded. There are various users of off the charts. There are people that uh, will, you know, be very selective with my trade ideas. They'll pick and choose what they like. There are people that will trade every idea I put out there. Um, there are those that will day trade my ideas. If I like, you know, XYZ stock, you know, they'll focus on XYZ stock for maybe a day or over a series of days, day trading in and out of it over the course of, you know, whatever that stock may do. So, um, uh, that, you know, it's not a, like I said, it's not a, a, a necessarily a static product. It is fairly dynamic. And I've met with, you know, several users of my product that tell me, oh, you know, I took this trade or I took that trade, but I didn't take this trade. And that's totally fine. It's whatever, you know, uh, at the end of the day, um, all I'm trying to do is impart, you know, a little bit of, of help, uh, it, you know, to those that are seeking, you know, good trading ideas with the understanding of why they're in those trading ideas, why being, you know, the most important part. Because if you don't know why you're trading it, you just you shouldn't be trading it. Um, uh, are your actionable trade alerts swing only or also day trades? No, my actionable alerts are really more towards swing trades. Uh, it's it's very hard to alert people as to day trades because day trades can happen so very fast that I just don't have the ability to see it and and get it out there in a timely in a timely manner for people to then take action. It's just it's it's too hard to do that. Um, so you know we have other products designed. You know T3 Live has other things designed for the you know the, the day traders, uh, the virtual trading floor being you know the most you know. Uh, um, uh, prevalent day trading, you know, uh, uh, space, uh, but mine's really designed more for, you know, those that are a little more hands-off. Um, time, uh, EMAs, what EMAs do you use? I keep it simple. I, I really, you know, I, I use a 21 EMA, 21-day uh, EMA um, to, to really define intermediate term trend. And then, you know, depending on the situation, I'll, I'll also put in an 8-day uh, EMA for faster moving trades. Um, and those are the two that I really key on. I, I, I also look at the 200-day, um, typically stocks that are, you know, uh, rising above an 8, which is above a 21, which is above a 200, are the most powerful trends. Stocks that are below an 8-day, below a 21-day, below a 200-day are typically uh, the most powerful downtrending stocks. Um, and again, these are just rules of thumb. They're not exact sciences. But those are the three uh, EMAs that I, that I focus on. Um, Who's in charge of the options supplement? Uh, a guy by the name of Steve Smith, uh, a friend of mine who's been an options trader for years and years and, and years. Um, and, and he, you know, he's been taking my trading ideas uh, and and you know, trading options around them for a long time. And we finally, you know, got together and he said, "Look, let me, you know, do this thing. I can, I think I can really, you know, add a lot of value to your." you know, your technical trading ideas for those that are, you know, that live more in the option space. So we're, we're working on that um, so that, you know, you get it both in the, you know, uh, on the stock side uh, and, and the option side. Um, let's see here. I'm not sure how I'm doing on time. Uh, so let me take some more questions. Um, do you have a max number of open trades at any time and what percentage are day versus swing trades? Well, there's none of them that'll be day trades. Um, I've had, I don't limit my trading ideas. There have been times where, you know, we have had in upwards of, you know, 17 to 20 open positions, again, in, in very select market times. It's all relevant to whatever the market's giving us. Uh, and there are times where I've had maybe as little as, you know, three or four or five you know, open trades. There's always something typically uh, uh, in there, um, but I said I don't. You know, I don't make guarantees. I don't tell people you're going to get three trades a week or six trades a week or one. I don't do that. I, I kind of let the market dictate how active, you know, we should be. Um, in you know September, October, we were short a lot of the uh, energy and oil names, um, uh, which was you know obviously a very very good you know good good time for for uh, you know, the users um, into November and December, it became more of a mixed bag. And even still in January and February, you know, I've been dabbling with some of the energy names uh, down here at certain, at these, at these current levels, although they haven't been, you know, overly spectacular. 
Uh, they are starting to, you know, wiggle. Out. Some of them are starting to wiggle out a little bit. Uh, looking at some of the high flyer names, we've been in uh, Apple. We've been in um, uh, uh, Priceline. We've been in, you know, a couple, a couple of those momentum-driven names. We've been in uh, uh, GMCR. Again, I'm just kind of pulling out symbols, but there's been so many trades. Um, I think over the course of the year, maybe we'll make. You know, there'll, there'll probably be over the course of any trading year maybe 200 plus trading ideas. So, you know, you're getting a ton of value in the sense of, look, I'm not suggesting that you take every trade that I do. Um, you know, ultimately that that's up to you. Um, but you find what works for you. I think this is the way mo most people do it. Most people tend to pick and choose what ideas they like uh, that makes sense for their own, you know, their own personal risk uh, portfolio. Um, again, you got to make sure you're 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 doing what's best for you. I know there's people that like, you know, tend to like when I put some of the cheaper stocks in there. We're looking at a, you know, I think right now we have a couple, you know, six or seven dollar names, some of the energy names. Um, uh, but but like I said, it's a, it, it is very much a mixed bag. I don't I don't discriminate in the sense of I'll trade anything, ETFs, stocks. Um, you know, high price stocks, momentum stocks, low price stocks. It doesn't really matter uh, to me. Um, so that's you know that's what I uh, like. I said it's not a one size fits all. I know there are other services that are out there that you know only trade ETFs or only do this or only do that. I, I you know this is all based on my own trading experience and what I used to do for myself. This is how I planned my trading when I was. Uh, you know, uh, actively engaged day to day, um, and I just continued to do it. Uh, uh, you know, I used to kind of come up with a game plan for the for the firm uh, back in the day, and, and this was kind of how this product uh, evolved um, because I became you know I had a knack for for kind of digging out trading ideas that I think other people just didn't see or didn't you know didn't think of. Um, so anyway, that's that's kind of the the background and on, on the product. Um, and I think I might be out of time. I'm not 100% sure here. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's t3live.com uh, forward slash uh, OTC. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up that, uh, that, short, that, that, that slide. Um, and if there's any more questions, then uh, you know, put them in the room. If not, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and I will turn it back over. Uh, to the host.